नमस्कार शिक्षार्थियों आज के सेशन में आप सभी का स्वागत है आज हम बात करेंगे लेसन 28 बी की सीनियर सेकेंडरी लेवल पे जिसका टॉपिक है प्ले सेंटर एंड इट्स स्ट्रक्चरल डिटेल्स सो फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस द ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ टुडेज सेशन सो आई हैव मैंशन द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑन द फर्स्ट स्लाइड एज यू कैन सी द फर्स्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव इज बेसिकली टू अंडरस्टैंड द फिजिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ प्ले सेंटर and the facilities available at a play center for children then we're going to talk about the material and equipment requirement of a play center what kind of materials are required in a play center so that it can function properly and it can provide the holistic development to a child then we're going to discuss about the essential requirements for the staff members of a play center so what kind of staff is required to run a play center and what are the quality characteristics of the play staff members so we'll begin with it so first we're going to start with the structural details so a play center majorly focuses on children of age 2 to 5 years we have discussed in earlier chapter as well that play center is basically focusing on early childhood development so the age group that is going to be integrated in a play center is 2 to 5 years old then a play center provides a play and activity based program as the name itself suggest a play center provides a play based program where the inbuilt activity of the child the curiosity of the child is feed through the play activities as we all know in childhood children are so much into playing uh for example solitary play where the child is itself involved in any play activity sometimes cooperative play is also seen cooperative play means where two to three children are involved in a group play setting so play is the major activity of early childhood and that's why play center becomes very important for early childhood development so now we're going to talk about the location and space requirement for a play center as play center provides space for play exploration interaction a play center needs adequate space easy accessibility safe from hazards proper sanitation and ventilation so we just said that a play center provides exploration by exploration and inter interaction between children and adults also that are involved in the running of the play center so as we are providing the child with all these basic amenities and basic needs the play center need to have a proper space where these activities can be done and nobody gets hurt meanwhile these activities are being conducted so it becomes important that any play any play center for that matter have adequate space and we'll talk about what is adequate space and then easy accessibility for example if there is a play center which is far from say which is located in a very say polluted area so that's not right easy accessibility means it needs to be in a location where it is safe from any kind of hazard it is free from pollution it have a playground it have greenery around it and it is easily accessible in the sense the child can reach the play center easily easily accessibility means reaching the place easily there is transport available to reach the play center or maybe it's on a walking distance from the child's home so that's what easy accessibility means next we have written is safe from hazards so a play center needs to be in a location where there are no hazards as such which are affecting the child's health in any sense so for that matter we can say it should be free from pollution it should not be located in an industrial area where too much toxins are being released in the air so there is air pollution even though air pollution is everywhere in current circumstances but still we are trying to build a play center in a location where there are a lot of trees available for, uh, as so that the air is less polluted and the land is also stable so basically if uh, if the play center is uh, say built on a mountain and the la and the land is say sometimes up sub sometimes down so that is wrong the child can get hurt while reaching to the play center and that is not our motive and we don't want to demotivate the parent and the child so that's why safety from hazards and then we have proper sanitation and ventilation so a play center needs to have proper air facility where there is enough so the child is not exhausted or say 
the child does not feel exhausted throughout the day while doing the activities there needs to be proper space and proper air ventilation so the air is regulated properly and the child can spend their day in a ease sanitation means toiletry facil facilities that are available in a play center so proper sanitation and ventilation needs to be there there needs to be windows proper doors so all that needs to be there in a play center we'll discuss it in detail now let's move ahead so the first uh, characteristic we are going to discuss of a play center is the play area and in that too we are discussing the outdoor play area so there are two types of play area as this might give you a little hint that there are two types of play area outdoor play area and indoor play area first we're going to talk about the outdoor play area there are so basically 3 to 5 square meters of area per child should be available to every child so when there are 5 uh, 5 to 10 children in a classroom or say in a play center classroom so what happens is there should not be hodgepodge happening in a classroom there needs to be adequate space for each and every child where they can sit properly they can stand they can have their lunch they can do the various activities that are be conducted so there needs to be 5 5 3 to 5 square meters of area per child it should have grassy lawn and hard surface so a play center should have hard surface for playing as well as grassy lawn so we need the concrete or hard surface so as to provide for example if a child wants to do cycling on a grassy lawn cycling is a little difficult for the child and as the child is in the age group of 2 to 5 year old the child is still learning how to cycle so we don't want to ruin the child's experience of learning how to cycle so we will provide them a hard surface where they can the wheels can move easily and there is less friction happening so this will actually enhance the child's experience and that is why hard surface is important in the context of a play center then a grassy lawn where the child can learn about different plants different uh, for example flowers vegetables different animals so basically providing a garden area to the child is important so that they learn about the environment as well next precautions for safety and security should be taken so for this what can be done is there can be fencing of the play center properly so that the boundaries of the play centers are clearly defined and when the child is exiting the play center they know that now they are going beyond the play center boundaries that can be done and any uh, damaging objects such as glass or maybe some uh, say toxic objects such as uh, used plastics or something like that should like biological waste or something should not be there and we should maintain the safety and security of a play center so that the childs have a easeful time and they spent their time learning rather than worrying about their health or their parents worrying uh, or their parents worrying about their health next we talk about the characteristics of indoor play area minimum area of 2 square meters per child should be available when we talk about indoor play area we talk about earlier we said 3 to 5 square meters is enough for the child now we are saying 2 square meters is enough how is this differentiating so basically when you are outdoors each and every child going to run they going to play different activities and they going to uh, like say for example when they are playing and they are running around near the swings maybe and uh, so each and every child should have a minimum distance of 3 to 5 square meters between them so none of them is getting hurt while playing whereas in a indoor setup 2 square meters is enough because they will be sitting on their seats and if they have to stand up the child the child will be supervised by the teacher so that's why 2 square meters per child is enough in in context of the indoor play area facilitative of supervision so the indoor play play area will be supervised by the teacher so it should the play center ka indoor play area should be in a way that the teacher or the caregiver whosoever is looking after supervising the child is easily able to do so if the room is way too large then the teacher or the caregiver will not have the uh, like 
control over the classroom so that they can manage that each and every child is getting adequate resources and they are getting indulged in each and every activity. So that is why it is important to provide area that is facilitative of supervision as well. Well ventilated and have adequate light. Each and every indoor play area should have adequate light and well ventilated so that the child can see properly and conduct the activities properly and they can involve and learn. Have a mat and a set of low light. So basically now we're going to talk about the different infrastructure that are need to be there in a play center in an indoor play area. So next is have low racks for putting children's belongings, toys, etc. For example, child going to carry their bag or their books from home. Uh, if not books, there will be like their lunch. So un sab ko rakhne ke liye bhi, we need low racks so that child can easily reach these racks. If they are if they are not up to their height, if they are like, for example, five foot. So that will be a problem for the child. And the child might feel demotivated that I am not able to reach this. But we need to understand that a child of two to five year old need a low rack because they are still in the age of development. Their height is growing and their brain is developing. So we need to cater to that accordingly. Have place for self-expression. For example, display wall, space for dancing, music, dramatics, etc. So we need to provide an area for self-expression as well in the indoor play center. So this area will be empty. It will not have any specific toys. What will be done here is we can put a pin board here. So whatever the child is doing throughout the day. So for example, if the child is doing finger, paint, finger painting, so these finger paintings can be pinned up on the board. So that's why a display wall can be used here in the self-expression area, space for dancing, playing some music and the child can dance to the music and they can enjoy the music. So now we're going to talk about the different facilities. Till now we talked about the outdoor facilities, outdoor play area facilities and the indoor play area facilities. Now we're going to talk about some more facilities that are need to be there in a play center. So. The third facility needs to be there is space for interaction with the environment. We earlier talked about the availability of a garden for the child. So what happens is if the child is not given the cho like given the choice to explore a garden, they will lack the environmental uh, say environmental sensitivity. How will they learn that a plant grow by like if you water a plant, if you give it some manure or like some nutrients to the plant, it will grow. So this sensitivity need to be developed in the child in the early childhood. And for that, they are supposed to be provided with areas where they can interact with the environment. And that can be done through gardens and different playgrounds. So that is why we need to provide them this area as well. Next, facility for drinking water. Obviously, this is one of the very basic facility that needs to be there in a place center because if we are not able to provide clean drinking water to the child, we are act, we might be causing some kind of health issues to the child if we are providing contaminated water to the child. And this is very questionable in terms of if a place center is not able to provide clean drinking water to the child. Next, sanitary facilities. We earlier discussed sanitation and ventilation should be provided to the child. Then sleeping facility. So for example, if you ever visit a play center, you will see that their timetable has been designed in a way where they are given breakfast, they are given activity, activity time and they are given nap time as well. So the nap time is basically sleeping facility. Ke liye. And for that nap time, we obviously need beds and uh, pillows and blankets. So that needs to be there in a play center. And sometimes if not the nap time, the child, one of the child might not be feeling well. And for that, we need to provide the child a proper rest area, which should have pillows, a proper bed, a blanket. So the child feel at comfort. So that's why sleeping facility is important in a place center. Next we have a storage facility. Storage facility is to store the the all the equipments and all the things that are required to run the play center for example the ration the blankets and pillows the toys the books whatever is required to run a play center will be stored in a storage facility 
Next, we're going to talk about the kitchen facility. As I was just saying that a play center has its, a timetable of its own, which talks about how they are, the child is to be given breakfast, there will be second breakfast and then lunch and then there will be like when they are leaving for home, usse pehle bhi they are given a snack. So for that, we need a kitchen facility where the food can be prepared in a clean and hygienic surrounding. So next we have is equipment in the play center. So some basic points of the developmental level of children, durability, safety, complexity, etc. need to be kept in mind while purchasing or using any equipment. So we, what we are trying to say here is before purchasing any play equipment, play center equipment for the child, what is need to be kept in mind is the age group of the child that is two to five years old. But in a play center, the two to five year old is also differentiated into different sections. For example, two to three will be in one class for three to four years will be in one class and then four to five years also are going to be differentiated in another class. So that is why for each group, there are different developmental needs and there are the requirement of the toys also differ. So that's why we need to keep in mind the developmental level of the children, that is their age, the durability of the toy. Whatever we are buying should be durable, should be strong and should not harm the child in any sense. Sometimes what happens is uh, a play dough or clay is very famous in the market, but certain companies uh, have been kind of using toxic materials in their play. So now what government has initiated is that the play needs to be certified that it is safe for children and it is safe for playing. So that is why, sorry, that is how we need to keep in mind what kind of material we are buying. It is durable, it is non-toxic and it is safe for the child to play with. And the next, uh, uh, you can see here, the next word is complexity. So what happens is, if you are always giving the easy toy to the child, they will do it and they will lose interest. After a while, maybe after two to three trials of, the, of solving the toy, they will lose interest in the toy. So what we need to do is, we need to give them something that is a little more complex or something that goes level by level, stage by stage. For example, puzzles in that sense are stage by stage. Some puzzles are four pieces, some puzzles are seven pieces. So we can increase the complexity of the toy as the child is able to solve the lower ones. We can provide them the advanced toys as well. Next, we're going to talk about the characteristics of good play equipment. So we're going to talk on three different terms, uh, three different axes, educational characteristics of the toy, the design characteristics of the toys, and constructional characteristics of the play equipment. I have been using the word toy, I apologize for that. So, so we're gonna discuss first the educational characteristics of the play equipment. So first of all then, uh, whatever toy you are buying should be gender neutral. It should not, uh, it should not be any, it should not be gender discriminating in any way. So for example, what happens is in the market, we have seen that there are toys available which are specifically pink in color and unko advertise bhi kiya jata is, uh, by saying pink is for girls and blue is for boys. So this is wrong. We are creating gender discrimination on the basis of color. So what if a boy like pinks? So we need to think about that while we are buying a toy, what color it is and what, what is our target population. So keeping in mind that our toys are gender neutral and the equipments of the play center are gender neutral. Next we have is provide for choice and graduated changes. So graduated change, changes basically means is gradual changes as the child is developing and there is, an, uh, there is evolving, uh, so as the child is evolving in terms of their cognitive and physical abilities, the toy should have this characteristic where it provides the choice and gradual change to the child and it, it, it can be explored in different ways basically. The toy need to provide flexibility to the child. Involve the child's imagination. So child ka jo, as the child is growing, uski imagination capacities are also growing and they are becoming very curious. So a toy should always be a little complex so that their imagination co can go beyond and it can be developed 
in a more advanced sense. Next we have is encourage cooperation among children. We just talked about cooperative play, solitary play and co cooperative play. So cooperative play actually is a, a major activity of early childhood where the children learn to socialize. And by socialize we mean they learn how to be a participant of a group and how to be a, uh, how to give their part or how to play their role in a group. So that's why cooperation through toys can be taught to children and it can help them in future when they are part of a bigger group setting. And uh, next we have is design characteristics of a play equipment, multi-use flexible and child, child safe. We just discussed how the toy should be flexible in nature and should provide different approach to the child. It should not be just that usko sirf ek hi sense mein use kiya ja sakta hai. The toy should be able to provide the child to think in a different manner every time or say sometimes at least in a different manner. The, the toy should be more flexible in that manner. So for example, if we understand flexibility, when we provide a child, say with a toy truck, the child has seen and observed that on roads, the trucks are loading different, different goods and materials and they are taking it to some other place. But some other time, the child observes that the truck can have sand in it. So when the next time child comes to the play center, what they do is they take the truck the toy truck into the playground and they fill in the sand in the truck. Now they have learned that they, the truck can be used for different trans, transporting different materials. So that is the flexibility of a toy. It could have been used in a classroom setting, indoor play area or in the playground as well. So this is the flexibility of a toy. Then we talk about the child safe part. Child safe we just discussed when we talked about the clay clay or play dough so each and every toy should be non toxic in nature it should not contain any harmful or say unhygienic material in it so that the child can freely use the toy and play with it and there are no health hazards as such associated with the toy next it should be made of different materials such as wood rubber metal rope sand why the toy need to be made with different material so the child's tactile senses that is their touch sense and their identification of different material is enhanced if we keep on giving the child of plastic toys then they only know just that plastic toys exist last we have is proportionate and quantitative so there need to be a ratio maintenance how many toys are there and how many children are there so the ratio needs to be proportionate thank you so much and if there are any queries, please put forward them in the YouTube section. We will be looking forward for your queries. Thank you.